Back with Bobby in JJ Radio, we have Mr. Jose, actually Joe Perez. Yes, uh, sir. He only is called Joe or Jose when his mom's really angry at him. Uh, just in from uh, a European tour, I heard. So I, yeah. I heard you took your nine-year-old, your 18-year-old, and your lovely wife out to Europe. Yep, for a few days. Came back just to hang out with us. I want to say thank you for hanging out with us. You uh, are the owner of Frontline Support Solutions, LLC. Uh, you have had a business awards with the North Chamber of Commerce. And you've also had the Small Business Veteran Champion Award by PTAC. Uh, let's talk about Frontline. What is Frontline Support Solutions? What do you all do? Yeah, so uh, Frontline Support Solutions is a small service disabled vet and minority certified 8A firm. We're federal contractors. Um, we started off as builder, uh, construction, uh, in, in various different trades. Uh, we built the detention and irrigation ponds there at the SAMC. Uh, basically where the air life lands. We built that a few years ago. Sure. Um, and then moved on and we started doing facility support services. We created the waste recycling program for all of Central Texas and all the way up to Kerrville for the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, we window wash. I mean, we, we do whatever the government needs. Uh, sure. We're able to do stuff with that. So um, what, are you, what are some of the commitments or some of the core values that you guys are really stick to? Well, we have five core values. I mean, uh, the biggest one is... Um, uh, everybody comes back to the green zone. I mean, you know, I spent a career in the Army uh, as an infantryman and then a, an intelligence officer, and, and one of the things that uh, I learned from there is that every one of my soldiers needed to come, come back home every day. And so I, I've taken that to, especially in the construction industry, making sure everybody comes back home safely to their loved ones. And that's critical for us. For sure. Um, you know, we use a lot of uh, military-type terms. Um, you know, we never leave our wingman. Basically, we take care of each other. Uh, we ensure that we are all successful. We work with each other. Um, and, and it just goes on. I mean, we have several others. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that's one of the things that helps drive our company to success. Sure. And um, so what got you into to creating Frontline Support Solutions? Well, I, uh, you know, this is my third company. I actually, uh, after I got out of the military, took over a family business. It was in the landscape business, and, and we grew that pretty pretty quickly. And we used to do the grounds maintenance at Kelly Air Force Base when it was a base. And, and then at one time we had contracts on all five military installations that were in existence at that time. Um, everything from trimming trees, irrigation systems, building gazebos, painting stripes on the street, uh, whatever. Sure. Um, so we did that. And, and then uh, um, in the heat of the downturn, uh, um, you know, things got tight. So we had to, um, you know, tighten our belts. But at that time also was very involved in the, in the greater chamber and was uh, involved in the Military Affairs Committee pretty strongly. And uh, we had a new administration come in, you know, the Obama administration come in, so they sent out all their talking heads, and we had this young lady come and brief us on the state of the economy and the unemployment rates at that time. And the data she'd give us was just out of, out of control. I mean, we were pushing, you know, 8 9% unemployment, but for veterans, it was nearly double that. And if you're a service-disabled vet, they really didn't even have you know, stats. It so it was just out, out of control. So uh, at, that's when I made the decision to, I needed to, to divest myself from my family's business and, and start this one. The, the economy was, you know, in shambles. And, you know, was, to me, so this it was about like 2009. Nine, nine and 2010 is when I established Frontline. And, mm -hmm. you know, the thing is, is, you know, we were all the way to the bottom. So there's, only, and my thought was the only one way to go was up. For sure. So, and so you, you just really wanted to focus on just hiring veterans hiring veterans and service disabled veterans i mean the initial premise of my company was to hire them teach them to be an entrepreneur uh because veterans uh, you know now with all the wars wars we've been fighting at that you know now we've been you know almost 15 years 16 years but back then not so much but what we have access to is to cash to start businesses from the federal government. Uh, we have some opportunities to do that way. So I wanted to take advantage of that and my own service disabled veteran status and, and start a company, and, and that's what I did. Um, and we've been pretty successful, thank God. So why do you, why do you feel that, the, why do so many people want to join your team, you feel, or, or how, how does that success continue for so long, you feel? Well, I think, I think uh, you know, adherence to our core values, and, and um, you know, one of the things that drives us is, is uh, I guess the, the entire, a focus is, is we find a better way. Right. I mean, there, there's just, in in my opinion, as the founder and and uh, and, and what has driven my team, we've come together and, and we've basically have uh, got that catchword is to find a better way. Sure. So tell us about your staff. How big is your team? Our team, uh, we're about 30 people now, mm -hmm. but uh, about four of them are 
um, in the office. Mm-hmm. Myself, I got a VP of operations, a guy that runs the whole office, and then I got a part-time uh, a professional who does uh, hiring for us. Mm-hmm. And we have a pretty stringent hiring process. I mean, you know, I'd love to hire every veteran, but not every veteran is, is going to be set for the jobs that we do, mm-hmm. right? And so, so walk us through, say, say uh, <clears throat> somebody's going to work with you. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you walk us step by step in working with your team? Sure. I mean, so some of the other things we do, and, you know, I talked about a waste, uh, you know, waste recycling program and things like that. But another thing we do is we, we created a, uh, I mean, we, we do work for our uh, utilities, saws and CPS energy. So we take standard meters and, and turn them into smart meters, install those. And so what we do is we identify the specific work traits that will make those people you know a success and so we hire to that we find those traits and we hire based on those traits and you know they like it we make sure we find the right folks for those for those right job so joe talk about uh entrepreneurs organization eo entrepreneurs organizations it's a global organization of about sixteen thousand members um you know it's founders of a million dollar companies or above and and um, you're basically invited to come in join the group right um, and what it is is it's a professional development organization you know we're all successful but what we do is we help get more successful based upon um, shared experiences we do a lot of experience sharing like masterminding yeah masterminding but mm-hmm. we call it a forum um, and it's as similar as masterminding but what we do is we share experiences experience you know experiential sharing sure. that allows us to you know, help each other grow. And what is what is exponential technologies, and how does this contribute to the idea of abundance? Yeah, so exponential technologies is a is, is a catchword that one of my mentors, a guy by the name of Peter Diamandis, um, coined, and um, he, he's a futurist. Basically, you're looking at um, ways of how we live today in in actually a world of abundance, but because of negative um, news out there, you know, people think the opposite. But, you know, today, we, we, you know, most of the, even the poorest people have a cell phone. For sure. And, you know, you know, a cell phone today, it has more computing power today than President Clinton had when he was a president. Right. I mean, so, you know, we have that capability now. So we live in a world of abundance. Now, taking advantage of it is a critical piece. And so, you know, 3D printing, uh, artificial intelligence, those are you know, examples of exponential technologies, sensors, the use of sensors. And so what I try to do is I try to get those uh, technologies and and bring them into my company as much as I can to leverage the labor, work smarter instead of harder, do twice as much with the the assets we have, and and just be more efficient. I love it. For more information about this awesome company, you can check them out at www.frontline1.com. Again, that's frontline1.com. That's our show for the day. We'll see you next week. Bye.